sorry, it's uh, taken me a few minutes to get ready here. So um, today I'm uh, I'm going to draw a peacock, and so I hope you enjoy what I'm going to come up with in the end here, and uh, we'll see what we can do to create something interesting. So this one's a little different than what we normally do because what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a different background rather than uh, what I've done in the past. So we're going to just start with a complete purple background. Ken, I was just, uh, my sister was just in town, so um, it's nice to see that you've joined and uh, Mr. S Horst, how you doing from Germany? We've got some people from all over the place here. So what I'm doing is I'm going to start with a, a little bit of a darker background and uh, the body of the of the peacock. I'm going to just quickly sketch out here. Hmm, I didn't like that, but I do like what I did. So just a minute, um, let me undo that because I think I can use that to worry about stages of my feathers and where my feathers around my peacock is going to go and so you know the eyes on the on a peacock it's feathers so then that's going to be the eyes around the, the outside of the the peacock and then I'm just going to take um, this down in size to about a hundred and I need to go lower than that let's go to about a 50 work with a little bit of a lighter purple and I'm just going to build a little bit of the shape of the bird so we want his his beak to be fairly prominent in here so I'm not really versed in the way peacocks look so if any of you are zoologists out there and know a whole pile about peacocks this may not be the way a peacock looks but this is the way my drawing is going to be of a peacock, so you'll just have to bear with me. So this is going to be his head, and now I'm going to go down to even smaller than that. So let's go down to about uh, 30, I think, would be a good number. So edit, undo the 30, and then just working on getting the basic shape. So you can see the way the, the shape of it starts to design. So can anybody, can you guys hear me? If so, does somebody want to just give me a thumbs up or something like that? So I, I know that the volume is actually coming through. I didn't get a chance to test it before I started to draw. So if you can't hear me, then you're going to have to watch me draw in silence. And then I'm going to talk to myself for 25 minutes here or whatever whatever it takes me to complete some of this stuff. So that's a thumbs up so you can hear me, which is nice. Thank you. Thank you, Carrie. Let's go down here and uh, I, I like this color for this. And I want it to be bigger, so I want this to be about a 90, I would say. Oh, not big enough. Edit. Undo that. Let's go to 290. <clears throat> there we go. Okay. So uh, this is just some of the stuff that goes on in behind. The peacock's body and where the feathers come flying into the body. So. So it's just a kind of a fl fluffy, rough shape around the outside. We would like his eye to be black. So let's go up here. We'll zoom in here just to play in this area a little for a little bit. Zoom in, not out. And then we're going to draw in his eye to give him a little bit of a look. We're going to change that from 
that color to 10's a good size? No, nope, 50's a better size. Let's try 50. There it is. That's not black, is it? There's my black. So there we have a start of the peacock and his colors. So we're just going to start to texturize some of this stuff and start to give them a little bit of a Mr. Peacock Man. Okay, so then we start to have, like, you're starting to feel a little bit of the of the peacock and how some of this stuff would would work into a pattern around his head now if I remember correctly peacocks have these these things sticking off the top of their head and then you see this color that I had down here so I'm gonna go find that again and that's um, this one here and so I want to find a light or is that light blue color so in here so this is kind of highlighted in here which I don't see much of oh that's because I'm working on the wrong thing it's working on a smudge and so it all it all start to come together as we start to fill in some of these colors and some of the shadows in the background but this stuff can be very um very low keyed and it doesn't have to be that exact so then we're starting to get the, the idea of how these colors work together now i gotta start putting on some other colors i like a whole range of greens and so we're gonna work with a big brush let me see what i can find here for a other brush. What if I could do it with that one? Let's see what I can do with that and go to about uh, 345 and see if I can pull the colors. Mr. Peacock Man. And if you remember, um, if any of you had seen me do any of this pull drawings before, the pull drawings, the, the original colors that you start working with tend to be very basic and very um, elementary looking. And so you start to just put the color on and then you're going to blend all of this stuff together later on. To, to see if you can create your peacock feathers but you can see how this is starting to be those you know the the things that look like eyes all over the peacock's back well that's pretty well what we're trying to do here as we're just trying to give it the texture and you can see how the the body of the the bird is not that important because now 
all the focus and everything is taken away from it. I think I want to go lighter than that. And now we're going to go down to 150. So even smaller. 150. And all that, all it's all I'm doing is change the nib size. So each one of these is just a different nib size. And so I started with a fairly thick nib. And then I'm just, I'm going to start to keep pulling all these colors in. And then I'll start to blend them later on using the smudge tool, which is where the pull comes in when you talk about the pull drawings. And so we go down a little bit further. You have really bright yellow right in this very center section. And I'll pull the white back in here so it, it actually will be on top. And all of these pictures are like, unlike uh, some of the wildlife ones that I spent hours and hours painting, these are meant to be very fast and almost this very similar to drawings that you may find um, when you do those party nights and you go painting on at a bar and uh, the drunker you get, the more creative your drawings become. Uh, I think those things are great. And it frees up the people just to try it and to try to, to draw. And that's one of the greatest things about doing these type of drawings is that there's there's really no right or wrong way to do this kind of stuff. And so when you're when you're drawn away. Whoa, that's too big. Let's put that down to about uh, 450. That's too big too. So let's go down to a 250. That's more like it. What colors do we want to make these? We sort of want to make them purple, I think. And again, that's just a tool that allows you to draw in the uh, the different shapes. Hmm. Edit, undo both of those. They're too small. Let's go to 150. And see how exact these are, and they stand out because it's too. They're too perfect the way they're they're drawn and. You're gonna, I'm going to fix that as we get closer to it. So Now, um, from here, what I'm going to do then is I'm going to work with a bigger brush. And I'm going to try and pull some of this stuff. Just to make it flow together. And I want that to be 100. To begin with. And you can see how you can start to get some very cool, uh, the way this, this stuff pulls will allow you to draw some pretty cool kind of shaped feathers. And so there's, again, like I've said every other night as I'm drawing, is there's no right or wrong way to do these things. You just sort of... Pull the stuff and keep pulling it until you get something that looks like it's coming together. So there's one of their, the 
feathers coming through. And this will be the, the second one that's coming in here. And they're all just, again, it's all very loosely done just to give you a little bit of the look. A little bit of the, the power of the pull. Now, as I'm pulling this, the draw is done by me holding my mouse down. So wherever I start pushing my mouse down now, see that blue area there? I hold my mouse down and then it pulls the blue. So wherever I start pressing the mouse, that's where you start to get the pull of the color. And so I'm starting here, I'm gonna pull the yellow up through here and you see how it pulls it up. So I'm gonna start down here and pull this up. So if I wanted to have a little bit more of this blue coming down through here, the darker blue, then I would start pressing the mouse down at that point. And then that starts to give you a little bit more of the, the pull that you might have coming off these feathers. And so if you think about it, they're feathers, right? So you have your center eyepiece, but then you always have the, the stuff that just flies out from the side. So, and you, so you can see some of the neat patterns that you start to create. Same thing here. I'm just going to start to pull the colors up. And so all I'm going to do is just repeat exactly the same thing over and over again, but each one will have its own little feeling to it or design or however, whatever you want to call it, because each one will pull a different color and, and start to make the pattern stand out. So you see how that sort of creates the feeling of the, the peacock in the background. And again, there's no right or wrong thing to do. All you're doing is pulling colors and pulling paint. Just pulling things in order to create that feeling that you might uh, sort of a stylized kind of peacock, which isn't it isn't exactly the way a peacock feathers would look, but it sort of gives you that feeling of everything sort of exploding outwards from the center point. So just keep pulling the colors. So I kind of got a, a fair number of them drawing together and so in areas like this what you want to do is you just want to pull some color down so it fills in the, the space around its head When you uh, do Facebook Live, maybe some other people may know this because I've been playing with it for a few days. You guys can write comments or you can ask questions if you want or if you want to add something or um, just respond, you're welcome to do that. Um, if you have a microphone, I don't know if you guys can participate in it. I was doing a Google Hangout um, the other day and I was drawing. Well, the other day, it was about a year ago. And one of the coolest things happened, I had a guy come on who uh, played some music in the background. And so the music was playing while I was drawing. And then another girl, I think the guy who was playing the guitar came from Scotland. And then the, then another lady came on who uh, said, hey, I know that song. And she started to sing. And then someone else came on and and uh, did, did some other like drum beat kind of stuff in the background. And by the time it was done, I think it was more about the music than it was what I was drawing. But talk about a neat um, international community event that just sort of happened as I'm sitting there drawing. And so if any of you guys know how to um, to sing or would like to join in and ask questions or typing or anything like that, feel free. I know Ken Chase is one of the most talented artists I know um, when it comes to uh, music. And so... If Ken could figure out how to hook up a microphone and you'd like to sing with me someday while I'm drawn, that would be so cool, Ken. I think that would be kind of cool, kind of 
jam it. I'll jam it with my uh, my drawing expertise, and you can jam with your uh, your guitar playing technique. But I honestly don't know whether or not you guys are can work with uh, a microphone, or whether you only get to write comments down um, and interact that way. So I know in the Google Hangouts, you can everybody can have a microphone, and I can control the microphones. But I don't know how it works here, whether or not. Um, it has to be set up in a different fashion than what I've got up to this point. So, so I kind of like the way this uh, this stuff is starting to come out, it's starting to fill up the. The explosion, the firebird. It's going to be more of a phoenix than it is going to be a peacock, but these uh, peacock feathers are kind of cool. Okay, now I'm going to work on his body just a little bit because that's a pretty embarrassing body for a bird. You, sir, have a very embarrassing body. So you, sir, we're going to fix. Sorry, I went silent as I'm starting, as I'm trying to create some of the effects here. I was just concentrating on controlling my mouse because no matter how much I draw using the mouse, it just it it's always a challenge and it's always difficult to try and get the lines to go where you want and. And again, because this is stylized and you're not trying to create the exact replica of a peacock, it's just sort of a, an abstract kind of drawing, you just sort of work on getting the general facsimile of an abstract kind of bird. Let's go back to this and let's go down a little smaller and we're going to zoom in here and then do these little pom-poms on top of this bird's head. That's not big enough. Uh, let's go up to 50.
And we're starting to get close to the feeling in the, your peacock. Okay, and then we're going to go back to the paint. And we're going to go to a real dark purple here. And let's go way down to the nibs. Let's go on to that one there. Okay, and I want to go to a fairly high point here. No, let's do that again. There's no colors there. I want to go to a 10. I want to zoom in on the eye here. Let's do this first. So we need to pull this color that white down like that. It's not too high there. A five is a little bit closer to what I'm looking for. And I want white. I want smudge to begin with, which is good. So I'm smudging this across his eye. Zoom back in here. Let's take this again. I'm at about a 10. No, I don't want that up to about a 50. A 50. Pull this down a little bit just in here. Just to give them that. You know how they have their little nostrils in there? That just gives you a little bit of a nostril effect there. Cut this through here. So I think the 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 colors and the way this is all coming together gives it kind of a regal feeling. And then in here we just want to smudge this stuff around to create a little bit more of the blubby, blubby little stuff that you have at the end of this. Little bubbles. And then we're going to go big to about a 50 or let's go to 100. Hey, my Royal Bank statement's ready. Isn't that great? Oh, my LinkedIn is here too, which is great. <laughs> 100. Black. 100. Black. 100. Black. Hey, Brenda. Hey, Jamie's here too. Hi, Jamie. And tonight I'm drawing a peacock. That I thought would be kind of fun to work on. And so I've just been playing.
I just I think that the black dots were needed just to to balance out how um, how much yellow there was in there and how strong of an impact the yellow was having on it so this is just to, to soften it up a little bit because it was too much so mr. peacock man so again when you're doing some of these you don't want to spend too much time because you can overwork things and that's where you start to, to mess things up um, No, that's wrong. I don't want to go six. I want to go 504. What size is that? Yeah, there you go. And you can see how this flare is a little bit different than some of the other ones because what it does is it it doesn't pull as hard. And so it's just a matter of using it to to give a little bit more of this. The feather effect that you would find on a on with all the different colors aiming out out from the feather, and just to give it a little bit more of a pop out. Sorry about all these pop ups that are coming through. Brenda, is posting something again. Some people asked me after I was finished drawing the other day how um, they can see some of my artwork. Um, I have all my work, artwork displayed on a site called Fine Arts America. And so um, right on there, um, they deliver anywhere in the world. And because this is digital stuff, I think I make probably, the, if you bought a, a huge painting like what the restaurant did where they bought a whole pile of huge paintings, um, I think I made $60 on a painting. And so uh, because there's nothing... I'm not actually uh, producing anything. The Fine Arts America used to be a framing company, I think, and uh, just do the framing and they can paint these type of things on pillowcases, on metal. And I took a few of my paintings and had them printed off on the metal and abstract and uh, framing, uh, sorry, just stretch canvas. And it all comes out very cool and gives a very neat effect, a lot of the different ones. They'll paint them on uh, glasses and thank you cards and the in the end I think I uh, I'll never ever retire on this activity because for me it's an activity and I never meant for it to be a, a big money making thing for me or anything like that but uh, there I kind of like that so there I have now completed my bird. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll do a, diff a few different effects on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sign it really fast, and then I'm going to play a little bit. So for the next uh, five or ten minutes, I'll spend a few minutes, and I'll just play, and I'll show you what happens when you can play, where you can put some different cut, some different light sources on it and stuff like that. But I'll sign this one because I think it turned out kind of cool, and I kind of like it. So here's a D for Darren. It's like Sesame Street now. C for Canal. Okay, now we're going to zoom back out again. My regal peacock. And now let's just play with some effects. This is the coolest one. Now watch what this does automatically. And I think this is so cool. What it, they do is it's called plastic. Now watch how much this affects this one. I think it turns out really cool. So do you see how that took that picture right away? And do you see some of the cool cool effects it has in here and the way it looks? And so I think that's so neat. Um, you can reset it to a little bit higher. And you can see how it, it, it's called plastic. And what it does is it just, uh, depending on how thick you want to make it. But let's take some of those highlights out and just uh, kind of make the depth a little bit deeper. And take the highlights down. So I'm going to save one as a plastic because I think it's kind of cool. So, okay. And then I'm just going to save that as peacock plastic.
quite often what I end up doing is I try all these different effects and in the end I end up just leaving it the way it was when I started it. But um, it's always neat to see some of the different effects that you can get from them. And so uh, let's just go with a camera angle here. And I want to do a lens flare, but a small one right on his eye. Let's see what I can do there. So see if it'll... I'd like to go with just rays. So let's go just rays. Uh, tails only. <laughs> you know what? No, no, I didn't want the tails. What's tails only? No, I didn't want that. I wanted to go um, red rays, yellow rays, eight point reflection star. There, so you put that right on his eye. And it's too bright, soften it down. Do I like that? I don't think I do. I don't think I like that. Take it off and see what it looks like. No, nah, I don't like it. So I didn't like that. So what happens if I put a lens flare on each one of my black dots? Let's go, um, not uh, star warp. I think that's too up and down. No, I didn't like that up and down. Um, let's do that again. Star warp is not the one I'm looking for. Nuclear blast. Side one, nope. Don't like that either. Let's go. point north star there now this is now we're talking so let's take this brightness down okay let's take that and put it right there but it's still too bright the fallout maybe is too big no nope. the other direction The size of it. Not sure I like that either. Don't like that. Don't like the four point star either. Sorry, sir. Sun rays. Woo! That's really bright. The size of it's huge. Yeah. I don't think I want to use any of this. I think I like it just like that. Do we want to put see if we can make some bubbles in there? Let's go with particles, bubbles all over it, <laughs> too carried away, size of the bubbles, density, coloration, transparency, don't like any of that, stars, I'm going to put some stars all over his body. Position, density, up there. I don't think I like any of that either. So as I'm playing with this, I'm not finding anything that really makes this any better. Or anything that I really like. The bubbles, these are the bigger bubbles. You see how they just create bubbles all over it, so we can go with the great big ones. <laughs> One's right on its head. Go with a smaller, smaller shape. You're all over the place. Now, let's see. See, I don't really like that, that either, so. 
kind of gives it a little bit of a funny effect, but uh, I think we'll just walk away from that. So that's it for tonight, kids. It's nice to see everybody. Thanks for everybody dropping by. It's nice to see a whole pile of names here that I haven't seen in a little while. Hey, Joey. I'm Mr. Atatui. How you doing, sir? I haven't seen you in a little while. I haven't talked to you in a little while. But anyways, um, that ends my live video uh, presentation, and we have just completed the picture of a wild peacock. I'll talk to you then. Bye-bye.